After serving six and a half years in the Navy, um, one of the things that I decided to do was become a field service engineer. These are the five things I wish I knew before becoming a field service engineer. In this video, I'll cover things like admin, technical knowledge, flexibility, travel, and just making the most out of this profession. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we strive for greatness through optimization. I'm John, I'm a field service engineer. On this channel, I talk about all things related to being a field service engineer. Before we get into the video, I wanna take a second to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you consider subscribing if you enjoy this content and smash that thumbs up button as it helps the channel grow. Now, with that said, let's get into today's video. The first thing I'll talk about is having the technical knowledge and expertise to be a field service engineer. Being in the Navy for six and a half years, I already had a maintenance heavy background. Uh, some of the things I did regularly were maintenance, repairs as well on equipment that I worked on. Eventually, I got to the point where I was responsible for assigning maintenance to other sailors that were um, in my division and that I was responsible for. In order to be successful at this job, you're gonna have to be able to take things apart and put them back together as you found them. Because a lot of the equipment that you're gonna be working on is going to be things you're going to be going inside of, taking things apart, it's gonna be imperative to make sure you're able to um, just have that technical knowledge, know what you're doing when you're working on the equipment, that way you're doing a maintenance and it's staying as maintenance and not turning into a repair. You're also gonna have to be able to navigate through technical documentation, being able to find information that you need in order to get the job done. You're going to go through training for the equipment that you're gonna be working on as a field service engineer. However, it's gonna be up to you to make sure you're diving into these technical manuals as you're gonna provide information for taking things apart um, just going into more detail about the equipment. Setting aside time to dive into these technical manuals is only gonna help you be a better field service engineer. Being able to pay attention to the fine little minute details is gonna be important as well to be good at this job. The equipment that you work on is gonna have a lot of components. So while you're working on the equipment, it's imperative to just know what you're doing, making sure you're paying attention to the tiny little details. That way, whenever you're done, you put the thing back together it's actually going to work as it's supposed to and you didn't introduce new issues to the equipment that you're working on. So having attention to detail when it comes to the equipment is gonna be important. It's also going to be important when you're filling out reports like IQOQs, these are installation qualification reports that are sometimes required for them to use the equipment. Another aspect of this job is going to be admin. Admin is king when it comes to being a field service engineer it can make or break you when it comes to this profession. I wanna take a second to thank the ladies that support myself and other field service engineers for the company that I work for because I don't think they get enough recognition for the amount of work that they do. They're the ones working in the shadows, making sure we have everything that we need in order to make sure we're getting to the customer sites and getting the job done. So thank you ladies for what you guys do. In a way, you're gonna be managing yourself like a business. You're gonna be tracking things like parts, travel, and things related to the equipment. Although you're gonna be working for someone, you're gonna have an employer, you yourself are gonna be operating as a small little business, uh, so to say. Some of the things that you're gonna be responsible for is um, scheduling your own travel. This is gonna be composed of scheduling your flights, your hotels, uh, your rental cars, all that is going to be tied in with travel and just knowing where you have to be uh, at what time, what day, just scheduling things with customers. That's gonna be important. Another part of this job is you're going to have a parts inventory. Uh, you're going to be responsible for ordering parts that are needed for repairs, um, as well as maintenance, sending old parts back that are no longer needed. When it comes to the equipment, you're gonna have databases um, that are going to have a lot of information about the equipment that you're gonna be working on. So it's going to be important to go in those databases Find out what that equipment needs, um, just little tiny details, software related, um, parts related, stuff like that that you're going to have to do before you go on site to the customer to work on the equipment. So doing that little bit of homework to work on that equipment is also going to be part of the job. 
Simply put, the more organized you are, the better you're gonna be at this job and the easier things are gonna be when it comes to getting things completed. Being someone that's operating as a business already, um, I have two other businesses on the side that I'm trying to get off the ground, including this YouTube channel. Um, organization is extremely important. It's a big part of my life. It helps me with my workflow, not only being a field service engineer, but other aspects of the job. Um, organization is just, it's a secret sauce to make sure you're doing everything that needs to be done when it needs to be done. The more organized you are with admin, the easier this job is going to be in the long run. Manage your time so you're staying on top of everything that you need to get done in order to be efficient and complete your workload. I think this is something that's easier said than done. Having a lot of discipline is going to only help you. Um, if you're someone that's well disciplined, um, you're a self starter, you know how to manage yourself, you're going to be good at being a field service engineer. Um, this is important because you're going to have constant work that needs to be done and completed. So being able to not only start at whatever time you decide to start your day, um, but being able to work on these things throughout the day, sending emails, communication, stuff like that, it just needs to be stayed on top of. So if you're someone that's able to stay on top of things and get things done as they need to be done, you're going to be good. So with that said, good time management, good discipline is only going to help you when it comes to being a field service engineer. The third thing is travel is a big aspect of the job as well. You'll have local travel as well as even countrywide travel. Um, for me, using myself as an example, I'm based out of Houston. Uh, there is a lot of work that I can, I have to get done in Houston. However, I do travel to all sorts of places. Uh, I was recently in Toronto completing work there. Um, I actually made a little video on my adventures while I was there. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you check that video out as well. Now, this is going to also vary based on the company that you work for. I know some of my coworkers that are maybe on the West Coast, they probably don't travel as much since a lot of their work is more so local. So there's going to be a couple different factors that are going to play a role into how much travel you're going to have to do. But being a field service engineer, travel is probably going to be part of the job. You'll be traveling for training as well as uh, group related travel in order to meet up with other field service engineers and just discuss what's going on in your region. Being flexible with your schedule is going to be essential to be successful as well. Your schedule is going to change often with repairs that pop up out of the blue. Repairs usually pop out out of the blue unexpected and it's going to change your schedule that you had planned. So being flexible and being able to just on the go change things that need to be changed just because you need to be somewhere, it's going to be imperative for this job. You'll also be working on multiple types of equipment for the company that you work for. Another thing is, depending on what type of person you are, how motivated you are, you're gonna be working on different types of equipment. For me, I started out working on two pieces of equipment for the company I work for. Now I work on a lot more, and some of these pieces of equipment are complicated. Um, now this can be a double-edged sword. Um, I know some coworkers that I work with only work on certain types of equipment versus everything. Um, I see this as a good opportunity for me, not only to stand out, um, but when it comes to hopefully promotion, stuff like that, um, I'm actually going to be that go-to person as I have a more vast amount of knowledge compared to my fellow coworkers. Working on more equipment also means more work as well. So keep that in mind. I know some days I'll be working on two different types of equipment and I have to make sure I have everything needed for both as well as be mentally prepared in order to complete the maintenance or repair that needs to get done on those pieces of equipment. So flexibility is key. Lastly, make the most out of the job. One of the things that I decided to do was start this YouTube channel in order to share my knowledge as well as earn a little bit of extra for doing something that I enjoy. Um, now, this initially started as me doing tech unboxings if you go back and watch some of my old videos. Um, however, being someone that wants to do less work and get paid more, um, I decided to mainly focus on being a field service engineer. 
Why? Because this is good knowledge, good information that I can get out to people that are interested in this career. Um, and since my channel is monetized, I earn a little bit of extra money on the side for doing something that I would be doing anyways. As you're traveling and meeting new people, make sure to take time to build a good network. Been able to meet a lot of interesting people being on flights, out and about in different cities, and I've been able to connect with those people just to either learn from them or just share adventures and ideas with those people. I think networking when it comes to this job is absolutely crucial. I'm um, starting to get to the point as I get older, it's actually who you know, not what you know. Yes, you do need to have substance, but at the end of the day, knowing the right people at the right places is gonna take you way further than what you actually know. That's a fact of life. Take advantage of all the points you're going to rack up while doing this job. As you travel, you're gonna be racking up all these points for airlines, hotels, as well as rental cars. So take advantage of those points. I recently had the opportunity to travel to Toronto. Um, I brought my wife with me for a seven year anniversary and that flight was completely paid for with points. So just taking advantage of the little things that add up is a key part of this job. So if your employer lets you keep those points, by all means, rack them up, save them up, and use them when you can. Again, I'm John. If you found any of this uh, information useful, helpful, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and smash that thumbs up button to help the channel grow. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of my photography based on my travels, my adventures, make sure to follow me on Instagram on Batmate. I'll have a link in the description below as well. With that said, I'll catch you on the next one.